Do you think then of yourself as a leader? You're in high school. Are you saying, I'm a leader? Not, you're not Martin Luther King, no. but are you, are you saying that? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. A at that point, particularly, I mean, it, I recall um, in, in 69 as, as a junior uh, in high school, it was a point at which I began to think of myself as someone who might actually be out, out in front mm -hmm. and trying to model and trying to inspire people to, uh, to move in a certain direction uh, by going there first. And I actually got in some trouble uh, during that time. This was a period uh, when the Black Panthers were quite uh, active in Chicago, and a young leader, Fred Hampton, on the west side of Chicago was uh, murdered. And um, as we understood it, you know, the police uh, intervened in an inappropriate way, and it was a gun, you know, shootout. And so it was a lot of anger, I recall, the next day at school. And it was this sort of diffuse, and people sort of wondering, what, <clears throat> what should we do? How do we respond to this? Mm -hmm. And I recall there were a couple of students who uh, began to suggest that we, we, you know, take destructive action. We break mm -hmm. windows in the school and make a statement. I, I intervened, and I didn't think about it at the time, but perhaps my grandmother had, uh, was haunting me in that mm -hmm. moment. And I said, isn't there a better way to make a statement? What if we simply walk out of school and demand that there be an assembly to talk about what has happened here and how it has affected us? And people bought my idea. And so I began to think, gee, I could actually have an mm -hmm. influence in which I may have prevented some more violent, destructive activity because people really were ready to, to move, ready to do something, and just weren't sure what uh, what to do. And these two guys, were, they happened to be brothers, uh, and fancied themselves as sort of young Black Panthers mm -hmm. in our school. Well, I wasn't that, but I, I often hung out with these guys. And so it was the courage. Man, commend myself here, I shouldn't do that, but the, 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 the inclination to intervene and to speak up at a moment of when a decision was being made mm -hmm. and to suggest what I thought was a better alternative. So uh, yes, now I, we did walk out and I was identified along with these two brothers mm -hmm. and we were um, expelled. And so it was uh, for me a time of learning a little about the cost of leadership, mm -hmm. the, uh, the risks of leadership, of uh, speaking out, of standing up, of being willing to be sort of identified and easily picked out. And um, these, you know, my colleagues had, were not doing very well in school, and so they were actually uh, expelled and transferred to other institutions. Well, I, you know, my grades were decent, mm -hmm. and so the, the, the principal struggled with, you know, what do we do with this mm -hmm. young young man, and eventually they put me on probation. And I became even more adamant about listening to the speeches, about learning mm -hmm. uh, how leadership was uh, unfolding. And when I began then to learn a little about uh, SNCC and, mm -hmm. and uh, even about the leadership role you played and others during the Civil Rights Movement, it really mm -hmm. imprinted me and was, I think, paving the way for my next uh, my next journey as I ventured to Morehouse College. What was your high school like? What was Morgan Park like? What was the racial composition there? Morgan Park, I would reckon, it was 75% uh, uh, white and about 25% black. So, there was so when you a, get elected to a student leadership position, you're getting the votes primarily of white students. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it was an effort uh, because my uh, elementary school was, uh, you know, I guess 90% white. Mm -hmm. And we walked some distance from our neighborhood on the south side of Chicago to get to that uh, Esmond Elementary School. So we were kind of, you know, we had white friends and mm -hmm. we, 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 we knew uh, they were approachable and they, they could be friends and that they were okay. And it was quite, quite striking to me because most of the kids in our neighborhood attended another 
uh, school, the Shoup Elementary School, which was, I, I could say, all black. Mm -hmm. And so most of our friends in high school were from the all black elementary how, school. How were you able to get out of your attendance zone, I'm guessing, yeah. to go to these other schools? You know, I, I've often wondered, and, and I think that, uh, that it was a matter of Shoup having reached capacity and their, you know, the need to sort of move some other students out to another another school. So I think it was just overcrowded, and uh, we lived far the, far enough away that they shoot, took the students that were closer. Mm -hmm. And then the question of what to do with those outliers, we then were uh, were uh, uh, transferred to to another. Institution. And I'm guessing the at high school at least that the teachers were overwhelmingly white. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It was a big deal to have an African American teacher. I can't remember there may have been five or six mm -hmm. uh, in the entire institution, and so um, you know it, it was. And this is another part of the story in terms of claiming my own leadership voice, or a couple of uh, the, the the white teachers in Morgan Park High School who sort of saw. Uh, potential and and named it for me and said mm. you know you really ought to um, uh, you know read these books and uh, you know mm. tried to expose me to other leaders who were claiming their their who, who had claimed the leadership in important ways so um, you know despite the tension that was always present in some way and because of things going on in the larger society would sort of spill into the city and we had certainly had I mean there were white guys in this in the gangs at the school who uh, uh, you know would, would uh, threaten us and terrorize uh, through the words mostly uh, they were rare that there were actually you know fist to cuff uh, mm -hmm. conflicts uh, although that did happen from time to time but you know we knew there were guys that we just didn't go near and you didn't talk to uh, and, you know, they'd use the N-word uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in our presence. And we just, you know, we didn't pick the fight and it didn't happen.